The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I've been giving a lot of thought about how I might greet you this morning. Like, Happy Reformation, or Blessed Reformation. Um, but perhaps we could say, A mighty fortress is our God. A mighty fortress is our God. And also with you. I don't know. Okay, so it's kind of awkward. We are celebrating this moment in ecclesial history, our church history, when Martin Luther nailed his 95 thesis to a church door. Now, this day is often misunderstood as the day that Luther decided to break away from the Catholic Church. That, of course, was not his intention. What he wanted to do was to bring attention to those who were in higher positions of authority in the church, to bring their attention to some problems that he had seen in the interpretation of Scripture. He really wanted to have dialogue with them so that they all might better understand each other. And communicating with each other honestly, openly, is one of the hallmarks of what it is to be a Lutheran. We as Lutherans value our connection with each other, our community in Christ Jesus, and in that community our freedom to disagree, and yet, to respect each other. Now, a part of the definition of Lutheranism acknowledges that we as a group do not believe that one church is singularly true in its teachings. So let's unpack that a little bit. That means that we are all wrestling with what God has revealed to us in Scripture and what it means for us in our present context as well as continuing to seek new understanding of what God's Word is telling us. According to this belief, then, Lutheranism is a reform movement rather than a movement into doctrinal correctness. In other words, the Bible is not a rule book, but rather Scripture, the good news, is our authoritative source and norm for understanding our relationship with God. And also, as we come to worship and hear God's word, we experience together the gospel of Christ, the good news that makes us free. This is the heart of our faith, and it is exactly where we intersect this day with our gospel text. Jesus says, if you continue in my word, You are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Now, when people heard Jesus say this, immediately they had a question for him. They said, we are descendants of Abraham, and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, you will be made free? And we, just as well, could ask the same question here today. We're not slaves to anyone. What does Jesus mean to be free? We are free here, aren't we? After church today, you will each go out those doors and live your lives. You'll get in your car and drive where you want to go. You'll go eat what you want to eat. You'll get up tomorrow, maybe go to work, go to school. You are free, aren't you? But Jesus knows that we are 
slaves. Very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. And Jesus knows we sin. And we know we sin too. But we think about sin in a funny way. We know what we ask forgiveness for. We ask for for forgiveness for the things that we do. I gossiped about someone. Please forgive me. I cheated someone. Please forgive me. I got angry at someone. Lord, please forgive me. We ask forgiveness for the things that we do, but it is not very often that we ask forgiveness for things we have not done. I know that there are hungry people that I have not helped. Please forgive me. I make sure to ignore the people who make me uncomfortable. Please forgive me. I occupy my time with things that I want instead of seeking you, Lord. Lord, please forgive me. That sin, it is sticky stuff. Jesus knows that we sin and that we are a slave to that sin. And Jesus says, the slave does not have a permanent place in the household. And so, what can be done about our sin? Well, on our own, nothing. We can do nothing about our sin. Our sin steals all the value we have. Sin bankrupts all that we might own. If you think what has happened on Wall Street has diminished value in your life, the sin that has happened at our own hands has really wiped out any worth we might have ever had. On his deathbed, Martin Luther said, We are all beggars. This is true. And even our begging is not what will save us. <clears throat> See, begging becomes boasting because it still says to God, I believe I'm worthy. Paul writes, Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. In other words, we are justified, that is that we are freed by faith, and that is faith in Christ Jesus, apart from works. And Jesus tells us, the slave does not have a permanent place in the household, the son has a place there forever. So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. But what does it mean to be free? <clears throat> Edna was a very special friend of our family. It will help if you can imagine her as she was, perhaps gruff, but actually a very friendly 90-year-old Swedish woman with an amazing faith. Her daughters are perhaps the best friends that Wendy and I have ever had. They are almost like sisters to me, and I think for my wife Wendy, she does consider them her sisters. So when we found out that Edna was going to hospice this last summer, we made sure to find time to visit with her and with them as they began this difficult journey with Edna from this place to the next. Wendy and I got the chance to visit on several occasions with Edna and hear her stories of her life, the things that made her laugh. We heard about her faith, the things that she had worried about, then knew that she would have to leave in God's hands. It was an enlightening time to be with her. At the end, she began to fade in and out of consciousness. 
Wendy and I were fortunate enough to see her the day before she passed away, especially fortunate because that particular day, she was very aware, very talkative, lucid. She seemed like the same old Edna we had always known, laughing, talking, sharing stories. Wendy and I were not there that last day with Edna, but her daughters, again, whom we are very close to, shared with us and said it would be all right to share with you those last moments with their mother. Now they had asked their mother, and Edna had agreed, to share as much as she wanted to share about what she was going to be experiencing as she passed. So that last day, as they tended to her, getting her washcloths or something to drink, bringing her a pillow or blanket, as she slipped in and out of consciousness, her eyes closed most of the time now. They would talk to her and ask her questions. And when she could, she would answer. Now, one burning question that the daughters had was, will mom see a light? So they would prompt each other to ask, ask mom if she sees a light. Then they would wonder, is it really okay if we ask mom to see the light? And they'd say, no, no, we, we talked about it. Mom said we could ask. So they asked her, mom, do you see a light? And just like Edna, with her eyes closed, she responded, no, I don't see a light. <laughs> and so as the hours moved from day to night, and finally, the very end came. At this point, Edna spoke very little. Her breathing had become shallow, and they all knew that the end was very close at hand. After a long while, they asked her one last question. Mom, are you in any pain? To which Edna responded very simply, no pain. Then she took a couple of deep breaths and said, finally, no fear. And she passed away. I think Edna understood then and understands right now exactly what it is to be free. What does it mean to be free in Christ Jesus? It means no fear. Not just for today or for tomorrow, but for your whole life. Even in your final hour. No fear. And so we pray. Good and gracious God, we confess that we have all sinned and fall short of your glory, yet we are justified by grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Help us to write your word on our hearts and know that we are free to share that word and all that we have with all the world. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.